Oh, how says so can I not do with you as a potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in the hand of, of Israel. Jeremiah 18, verse 6. You can read the chapters 18, 19, and 20 in your time. Okay. After ne ne this guy called Nebuchadnezzar, right, led the Babylonians to victory over Egypt in 605 B.C., um, you can read about that account in Second Kings chapter twenty-four, verse seven, and Second Chronicles chapter thirty-six, verse twenty. Um, sorry, Second Ah, yes, Second Chronicles chapter thirty-six, verse twenty. Judah faced perilous times because the king, there Jerichoam, had decided to rebel against Babylon and sided with Egypt, and so when the Babylonian army invaded Judah. Second Kings chapter twenty four verses one and two. The end of the campaign was guys like Daniel and Shadrach and Shek and Bingo and a whole lot of people got hauled off. Okay. But Jeremiah stayed behind, continued his forceful prophetic ministry during this time, warning people about the consequences of ignoring God. Um this caused him to be or in enemies within the church of his time or the temple. As well as the king became angry um, and wound up um, ex uh, communicating, I guess, kicking out of the country. Uh, Jeremiah having him arrested, thrown in stocks, as well as having some of his scrolls burned. Um, the potter's house, Jeremiah, ha he went there and was watching one time as the potter was working. And uh, in the late seventh century at that time, the pottery wheel consisted of a vertical axle, a stone wooden disc at one end, and a larger disc on the other end. And the potter used his feet on the larger bottom disc to keep the wheel turning rapidly and smoothly with his hands while he shaped the lump of dry clay centered at the upper wheel. Okay, and that is what made a pot or um, vessel of some type. It's interesting to notice that some of the best clay comes near Jerusalem. Don't you find that kind of strange? Okay. And, um, but it, 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 it's not just, uh, uh, clay pottery is refined from, uh, fine, dense soil, which is deposited, uh, by water a long time ago. Okay. So some of the best uh, clay is found in near Jerusalem and uh, but th this straight from the ground uh, Jerusalem's clay isn't exactly made into pottery okay it has to be refined down to them it's, it's a little bit too thick um, so it's poured into containers and lattice um, and and then strained clay becomes a slurry kind of slimy mix uh, and then it's through progressively thinner and thinner screens right so to make just to make the clay to make the pot is quite a, a procedure so when we we sing the song i you are the potter and i am the clay i almost made that mistake <laughs> earlier video which i accidentally deleted i said i'm i am the potter you are the clay and i reflected how in a lot of churches this is becoming the norm where we make yeshua the clay and we're the potters and try to shape them into our image when it should be the other way around um that we are the clay and he's the potter and we're to be demolded by him but the process to make the clay a thick clay a, a heavier clay it needed to be thinned down and then strained several times to be used to be able to be fashioned in something so um until they got the clay to a dense or this desire, desire sense of, of purity that it could then be molded, then sand, sh shells, straw, ground pieces of old pottery um, was added to it to prevent it from shrinking, all right, while um, after it had been shaped, it could be fired in the furnace and strengthened and made firm, all right. The potter kneaded the clay with his or her hands, and then that took out all of the air bubbles. Um, finally, the potter could shape every piece of pottery um, that was free from all the flaws 
and impurities. Okay, so we expect somehow that coming to Jesus, as it were, as the Christians would say, is some kind of like miracle thing where we're changing. We're now perfect little pieces of pottery. No, no, no. Indeed, we're just a heavy, unprocessed chunk of 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 uh, clay. Now we have to be more and more like a soup made uh, by adding more and more water and strained through finer and finer and finer screens and finally fired in the furnace to be able to, to make that density. And sometimes um, Yeshua has to add things to us so that we don't shrink, so we become smaller. Okay, so we maintain the, the density as to what he wants us to be. We don't add things of this world, we don't add things of government, we don't add things of any type of religious theology or situations, we simply become more meetable to not my way but his way. As we do this and grow, we become more and more mature. God uses this process, Yahweh uses this process of purification and fortification and concentration as the object of his lesson for Jeremiah. The process is, it parallels the experiences that Yahweh brings into our lives through as he prepares us <clears throat> to be fit for his service. Ask yourself, how has Yahweh worked by uh, on, on you to shape your life and change it? How have you changed over the years? What kind of person would you be in without him being in there? And according, are you still living according to his wishes? And how? Did you respond to that question? Isaiah sees um, idolatrous Judah as clay refusing to acknowledge the potter's control, um, <clears throat> but predicts a time when the clay would gladly submit to Yahweh's control and shaping. The Apostle Paul combined the elements of Isaiah and Jeremiah's usage of the potter and clay as imagery to help teach in Romans chapter 9 verses 20 and 22. Like Isaiah, Paul warns against talking back to the potter. Like Jeremiah, he imagined the Lord shaping some of the vessels for glorious purposes and others that would meet destruction. What are you being shaped for? Are you going to be for God's glory? Or are you going to meet destruction? Whatever your purpose is in life, whether it is to live or be offered up as a living sacrifice in the times of persecution which are coming upon this country, we need to be following Yahshua's plan. We need to have our hand firmly in him and allow him to dictate. Things weren't easy for Jeremiah or Isaiah or any of the great prophets. And the true ministers of God, things are not easy. We go hungry, we go beaten, we go... Rejected, we go chastised, we get slammed through, we get slagged through the mud, as it were to say, to make us thinner and thinner and thinner, all through the time. All right. We never once give up. Now there have been times I've wanted to pack in and give up and surrender and just say, I've had it. I can't take enough. I understand that I'm being shaped. I'm shaped in His image to glorify Him. And sometimes that's hard for me to yield. I hope I'm not like Judah. I want to be shaped clay. I want to be molded in his image. I want to be conformed to his will. Whatever he adds to or takes away from my life. And that's include personal relationships. And when ministers and teachers understand that, they will see that my life hasn't always been what it appeared to be on the outside. I did not always ask to be separated or parted. And those which hold their anger against me and, and rose up against me and said all kinds of manner evil things, you never once check the story. There's two sides to every story. I'm getting tired of being pushed around. And people lie to me, but you're condemning me. I'm going to tell you, you are not in Yahweh's will. Never have been, nor will you ever be. And it's time maybe that you've been completely over to him. I am a willow tree. Stop before the yoke or the oak falls on you. 
Until next time, this is Daniel Bome, in his humbleness and ordinance, ordinance, <laughs> saying, God bless you, and shalom.